Whenever Riptide is around, there is controversy. Never was that more true than on finale night. Before the fight, with Ethan's absence, and after the fight, with the judge's decision that left them eliminated from the tournament. Unhappy with the decision, Riptide appealed, only to see the result change from split to unanimous. But they were still not satisfied with that. Was it because they had a case? Let's dive deeper into the Abyss to see if their claim is real or more fake than the product Stan Kurtz endorses. The World Championship 7 quarterfinal between Copperhead and Riptide began with an aggressive Riptide striking first. After driving off the upper deck, Copperhead was soon drowning in the onslaught. But fortune favored the snake. Like a wounded boxer, Riptide bodied up to Copperhead, holding him close and controlling the exchanges. They had the drive power to stay on top, so long as they didn't get flipped. In the control category, there's a shot and now Riptide is on its head! That hit gave Copperhead the momentum, and he used it to push Riptide around the box, all while scoring minor hits. Copperhead will be able to win back some control! Riptide needed to get flipped over, and fast. Riptide back over, off and in fact his opponent does it for But then, another twist. Now Riptide was right side up, and the damage was more even. With only seconds remaining, both bots desperately looked for a way to score more points. But with no weapon, Riptide could only resort to pins. And with no right wheel, Copperhead could only swing and spin his way around. And the clock eventually ran out. What a fight! Time to break down what we saw, starting with damage. The big question here is, which is worse, Copperhead's wheel or Riptide's egg beater? To answer that, you have to determine whether they are effectiveness damage, meaning the system somewhat works, just not to its full potential, or if they are functionality damage, meaning they don't work at all. Riptide's egg beater is undoubtedly functionality damage, because as soon as the egg beater cracked, it never moved again. By comparison, Whiplash lost his disc against Monsoon, but regained it towards the end. That small amount of life is what makes the difference. Copperhead's wheel is a bit trickier. See, when weighing drive damage, the rules state that if you can move in a relatively straight line, then it's effectiveness. If you can only crab walk because of non-functional damage on one side, it's functionality. Now just because a two-wheel drive Copperhead lost one wheel doesn't automatically make it functionality damage. Minotaur has shown in the past how it's possible to drive forward while only having half of your drive working. However, Copperhead couldn't really do this. Although they didn't have many chances to show it, the few times Copperhead did attempt to drive, all they could muster was a crab walk. So, that means both bots had significant damage. But someone has to win the odd point. So, what swings it? Well, the only other real damage that had any impact was this side or the back here, Chris, but they might want Riptide to stay in this inverted position. Riptide is tipping in this exchange, because earlier in the fight, he lost one of his support ears. Without it, he struggles to drive when inverted. It's a fine, fine margin, but this little bit of damage is enough to determine the home of that last damage point. Next up is aggression, which is where I really like to crunch the numbers. In terms of attempted attacks, Riptide beat Copperhead by a count of 16 to 9. However, the aggression rules give more weight to attacks made with an active weapon as opposed to attacks made by pushing or ramming. Only 6 of Riptide's attempted attacks came before their weapon broke, which means that Copperhead made more attacks with a working weapon than Riptide did, by a count of 9 to 6. That only covers frequency. In terms of severity, Riptide landed six attacks before the weapon break, three small scuffs, and three big hits. Copperhead landed a total of 16 shots, three moderate, and 13 small. So although Riptide got the bigger hits, Copperhead got more hits. 
This more frequent use of the weapon also checks off the box for boldness, because Copperhead didn't have an armored front side to attack with. Once Riptide's weapon cracked, all they could do was push and hold. This is what solidifies Copperhead's win in aggression, as the Matrix clearly indicates more usage of your active weapon will earn you more aggression. Finally, let's talk about control. There is no debate that Riptide wins the control category, but based on the scores of damage and aggression, he would have to win control 3-0 in order to win the fight. Unfortunately for them, there are many parts of the rules that make this impossible. Firstly, a 3-0 score for control is described as, quote, a bot that is consistently able to manage its interactions with the other bot, either by landing attacks with its own weapon, preventing attacks from its opponent's weapon, or moving their opponent into advantageous positions. Riptide's weapon broke after only 24 seconds, meaning he wasn't able to land attacks with it for over 85% of the fight. He also wasn't able to prevent Copperhead from landing shots. Although most of those shots were minor, he still couldn't prevent them from happening. The one thing he did do was push Copperhead around when he was right side up. That brings us to the second point. How long was Riptide inverted? The answer is roughly 45 seconds, or 25% of the fight. That's a pretty big chunk of the fight where Riptide had zero control. And it would have been more had this hit not resulted in a fortunate bounce. Thirdly, a new addition to the rules reads that, quote, if one bot is consistently able to use its active weapon or arena hazards against its opponent, while the opponent is unable to effectively use their weapon or the hazards, then the attacking bot should receive the majority of the control points. This section clearly favors Copperhead. Only he had a working weapon for the full length of the fight. While I still believe Riptide should win control, despite what this last point suggests, it still serves as another piece of evidence as to why Riptide cannot win all three control points. To summarize, yes, Riptide did have a case initially to appeal this decision. It's certainly a close fight no matter how you dissect it. But where Riptide lost was in the fine margins. In damage, it was the support ear. In aggression, it was the active weapon tiebreaker. And in control, it was the 45 seconds of being upside down. Change any one of these factors, and the fight may well have swung the other way. But on this fateful night, it wasn't Riptide who would go undefeated. It was Karma.